I think that Antoine has just been a great person to have in my life, you know, teaching me life lessons, showing me how to grow as a character, you know, as a person. He's really been a great friend, great mentor, and I really love him for that. Thanks. Coach T is determined to make you better and believes in you every step of the way. But I first started working out with Coach T, probably about my freshman year. I knew he was crazy about basketball as much as me. Overall, though, working out with Coach T, I learned a lot. Uh, I could say leadership, uh, putting your team first. Um, um, it's it's a lot. I, I I can't even. He know, man. Coach T know, man. But going over time, Coach T used to always tell me, "Don't do that. Find somebody else to do it. Do something else." Like every time. So. Once he started doing that, I kind of already figured like, oh yeah, he, he want me to be a, you know what I'm saying, top dog, so. Developing Tomorrow's Leaders is a podcast that is all about educating, supporting, and inspiring the next generation of leaders. Welcome to Developing Tomorrow's Leaders, a podcast devoted to providing education, support, and inspiration to the next generation of leaders, who, by the way, happen to be a very energetic, passionate, caring, and a group of visionaries who need guidance, leadership, and direction. I'm your host, Antoine Thompson, or as I'm better known as Coach T, and I have over 35 years of experience coaching and mentoring young men and women, and I've seen and felt their challenges, and it is my mission and my absolute passion to help them not only to meet, but to exceed their own personal expectations. I'm also the founder of JLT Fieldhouse, a 501c3 nonprofit coaching and mentoring organization. And our mission statement is coaching and mentoring the leaders of tomorrow. It was started in 2015 and is named after my late father, Sergeant Major Joe Lewis Thompson, served 30 years in the United States Marine Corps and served two tours of Vietnam. And unfortunately, we lost him to leukemia in 1996 due to his exposure to Agent Orange. But what's even more special and why this organization is named after my uh, father is because uh, he was not my biological father, but he was my father. And I'm having this conversation in this podcast with you today because of the life that he provided for myself, my brothers and our mother. Uh, And when we started this organization, we had one regular client, and I want to share a little bit about him because he, he it's a true testament of why this organization was started. I was a young man by the name of Logan Hamill, uh, went to junior in high school and wanted to improve his game, and he came to start working out with me, worked out with me for two years and played out his high school career. Then he went on to North Carolina State University, where he graduated in three years, and in between every summer, he would come back, and on his breaks, he'd come back and volunteer to help out with our clinics and our summer camps. And to this day, this young man is always ready and willing to provide any support that he can because he truly believes in what we stand for and what we provided for him. Um, JLT Fieldhouse provides private lessons, clinics, camps, as well as a summer league. And prior to the pandemic, we had approximately 175 kids in our year round programming. And I'm also the CEO of Coach T's Corner, which is an online mentoring academy that was designed to educate, support, and inspire the next generation of leaders. Um, clients hire me to educate, support, and inspire personal growth skills in their preteens and their teens that will better prepare them by taking ownership of the tools for a prosperous future. As we know, the public education system does not readily provide the education in these personal growth skills that young people need. And some of these areas that we're talking about are accountability, personal responsibility, goal setting, which includes both short-term and long-term goal setting, a communication, meaning not just with peers and friends, but also with other authority figures. Um, we're talking about employers and as well as parents. You know, time management, com- uh, conflict transformation and or conflict, um, influence and peer pressure, competence, character building, and leadership, just to name a few, but that list can go on and on. Um, I've also developed a uh, C of Success program, and C is an acronym, S-E-A, which stands for the Simplicity, the Effort, and the Attitude of Success, and it's an application for all of the personal skills in our developmental program. 
Uh, this program positively impacts behavior and discipline in students, improves educators' teaching efficiency, and it's also a support system for parents. So it covers students, educators, and parents. So it's an all-in-one program. And uh, I have a uh, blueprint for this program, and it's available on my website, which is coachteachcorner.com, and I'll be providing more information about that at the end of uh, this broadcast. So let's get right into uh, what Developing Tomorrow's Leaders is all about. I'm going to be talking about some of the things, uh, the perceptions of our young people and some of the challenges that are going through. And I'm also going to share a little bit more about the guests that we're going to be having. And we hope that this uh, guest list continues to grow. Right now, we have already 30 people lined up to be a guest on the show, and I'm super excited about that. And some of these people are, are phenomenal, and I'll share a little bit about that uh, here shortly. Now, first and foremost, we hear so many um, so-called experts and in the news and everybody talks about how bad kids are, how out of control they are, um, not enough, but not enough people are offering solutions. Um, everybody's quick to judge, but not enough people coming to the forefront and say, hey, I have a solution instead of complaining about it. Because make no mistake about it, these young people hear everything and they learn from watching and listening to adults. So we got to remember where they're learning all of these things. I uh, want to share also a couple of experiences and stories that I've had that showcase the knowledge, ability, willingness, and capabilities that these young people do have. And it's all based on providing them the right leadership, guidance, and direction. Um, I'm the finished my 10th year at a private school coaching the seventh and eighth grade boys basketball team. And this young, this team that I had this year was probably in all of my years coaching, one of the top two teams I've ever coached. And it had absolutely nothing to do with the game of basketball. It had to do with this team's uh, accountability and their responsibility and their understanding of the common goal. And that goal was our team motto, which is team before self. And I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Now, keep in mind, seven and eighth grade boys. We had a young man on the team that uh, broke a team rule. And um, the, a couple of days later, a couple of the kids came to me and they said, coach, uh, so-and-so broke the rule or he did what we asked him not to do. And my immediate response to them was, uh, what do you uh, propose to, we do about it? And without hesitation, uh, these two young men said, make him sit in the bleachers and watch us run. I said, what? They wanted him to sit in the bleachers and watch them run. And he's the one that broke the rule. So it took me a second. I'm like, I love that. I say, I love it so much. I'm going to use that as my punishment for the team and for him. And so I said, but of course, if you guys want to impose any more uh, disciplinary actions against him, that's going to be a team decision. And he goes, okay, we'll talk about it. So, of course, made the young man uh, sit in the bleachers and he watched the guys run. And afterwards, the team went in the locker room and they were in there for about uh, four or five minutes. They came out and one of the spokesman for a team, because I don't have captains, because we're one team, one mission, one goal. So one of the guys spoke up and said, Coach, we've all discussed it, voted on it, and it was unanimous. And they said, for the next game, this young man will not dress, nor will he play. And I didn't hesitate. I said, hey, team decision. I support it. And of course, my, my next action was to turn this young man and, and make sure he understood what was happening at this moment. And he said, absolutely. And I said, now, you know, you're going to have to go home and explain to your parents why you will not be dressing or playing in the next game. He goes, yes, sir. And that, my friends, is what's so great about these young people. They have the ability, they have the willingness and they're capable of taking leadership and making the right decisions, not just for themselves, but for those around them. And they can influence those to also make the right uh, decisions. Now, I wanna give you a, a quick uh, example of the flip side of that, that happened this season within the same basketball season. We're playing an opposing team, which happened to be the two top teams, and we're playing for first place in our conference. And we play this game back and forth. As a game of runs, we score six or eight points. They score six or eight points. And the game comes down, and we're up by eight with about just under two minutes to go. I call a timeout. I say, hey, guys, we're going to slow the ball down a little bit. Let's just run our passing cut offense. Don't look for anything but layups. 
nothing but layups, easy baskets, make them fouls, we make our free throws, we win the game. Well, this coach neither pressed us or tried to foul. We ran the clock out, we win the game. And I thought it was kind of odd as an opposing coach expected him to, you know, put some pressure on. Well, we line up to shake hands. And right before we do, this coach is in a huddle with his players. And this is what he said to his team. And I quote, that coach is classless for keeping the ball from us. Now, I'm sure I would ask you, said, oh, I can't believe he said it about you. It's not about me, but that wasn't what I heard. What I heard was he's telling his team, don't take responsibility for losing the game. Blame somebody else for your inability to make the adjustments to make the game more competitive and have a better chance to win. So this is what's being taught on the flip side. And this is where I talk about leadership, guidance, and direction. We, these kids have to have the right uh, leadership and the right decisions. So another example I can give you of a young man that I had to build, uh, had the pleasure of working with and continue to work with is a young man that started to come see me when he was a freshman in high school. And he is now in his second, he's been out of high school for two years and still comes to work out with me. And uh, when he first came to see me, what a kids that had, uh, as they say, a chip on his shoulder, kind of thought he was really better than he actually was. And he and I had a few differences along the way early on. And I pull him aside one day because his attitude just was starting to affect other people. I said, well, we can't allow that to continue. And I explained to him, I say, listen, you're coming into my circle and this is what I do. And the first and foremost thing that's important to me is having an environment that people are feel comfortable coming into and you're impeding on that environment. So I said, hey, here's how it works. Either you do things the way I want them or this may not be the place for you to be. And he kind of settled in and kind of finished the day out, but I didn't see him for a while. And I'm like, okay, maybe he got the message and this isn't a place for him because it's not for everybody. I understand that. But about two months later, he returns. I never said anything about the past experience because obviously he had time to think about it and decided, hey, you know what? I need to be here. I want to be here. And to this day, we have the best relationship. He too comes back and helps with any clinics and uh, camps and private lessons. He even comes in for some private lessons and helps with some of the kids. And he's not just there. He's actually given direction. So this is an example of a young man knowing he wanted leadership. He wanted guidance. He wanted direction and finding that somebody cared enough to tell him the truth. And I tell the kids all the time, I'm the kind of coach that's going to tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. So this is another example of how great these kids are and they just need that. Another example I can give you is this is one of the simple ones, and this has nothing to do with athletics. This has nothing to do with trying to help somebody be a better person. This has nothing to do with trying to tell somebody how to do something. I'm having a lesson with a young man, and we he has them every week. And one of the things that's really important to me is developing a rapport with kids before I even try to teach them anything because I need to learn how to teach them, and that's all based on their personality. But we're having this uh, workout and we didn't do a lot of instruction. I didn't do a lot of instruction. It was more conversation, letting him shoot. And we just had conversation. Well, he gets home and I get a message from his mom later. And she goes, what did you do at your workout? Because he said it was his best lesson in a long time. And I told her, I said, well, actually, we just talked a lot. And that was a huge learning point for me. Because it told me that, you know, sometimes they just need to talk and they just need somebody to listen. And that's what I did. I just listened. We had conversations and I found out more about them just by listening. And that's what was missing. um, Not giving enough opportunities to, to speak and have somebody just have a conversation with them. So that's another reason why we are this village that we are creating of those that have the ability to have a positive impact on the lives of these young people have to step up and do our part. And there is one more that just happened a few months ago. And this one, my friends, will be the icing on the cake. This involves two former players. And it is a player that I coached in 1990 was got in contact with the kid that I coached in 1992 and was saying, Hey, I'm trying to get in touch with coach T. Do you have his contact info? I saw that uh, you commented on something or 
he found out that uh, we were connected. So, of course, coach reaches out to him and say, hey, coach, there's a guy that's trying to reach out to you. Uh, do you want me to give him your contact information? He said he played for you. I'm like, oh, absolutely. Send, send him my contact information. So about uh, three, four hours later, I get an email, and it is a young man that played on a freshman team that I coached at Meadowbrook High School. As soon as I saw the name, I knew exactly who it was, and he won't mind me saying this. He wasn't a, a great player, but I connected with every single one of my players, regardless of whether they were a starter or whether they were the, you know, the least experienced pr- player on the team. And so we set up a Zoom call for a couple of days later. And we get on this Zoom call, and it was just one of the greatest moments a coach could ever ask for, a player from over 30 years ago reaching out, wanting to reconnect with you. And the reason he wanted to reconnect with me was because his son was going through a tough time with his coach, and he was reciting things that I had said to him when I was coaching him, and he was saying them to his son. And he just told himself, I got to reach out to Coach T because I got to let him know the impact he had on me and in my life. And so we had that conversation and to know that things I said when I was in my twenties uh, to these teenagers, this young man, 14 years old at the time I'm in my twenties. I'm only just like nine years old that these kids were at the time is a testament to the importance of early relationships in these kids' lives and them being positive. And this is another reason why this is my passion and my, and my absolute love of my life is, is working with young men and women and kids want the, to be coached. Uh, they don't want to be coddled all the time. Some kids need it, but coaching is all about building relationships and finding that right way to approach kids. So those are just examples of my experiences. So do you understand that I have a connection and I, I, I have my hand, finger on the pulse of these young people and what makes them tick and also what's missing in their lives. And this is just over to where we are today. And one of the things that I force myself to do because I hate doing it is looking at headlines because it tells you everything that's happening and where we are in society and where these kids are in relation to not just this pandemic, but just their futures as, as a whole. Um, they, and then one of the biggest uh, things that came out most recently that I that really shook me was uh, a high school uh, coach being attacked by middle school students. And I mean, physically attacked. On the, on the grounds of the high school. Now, these are middle school kids on the high school grounds after school riding ATVs, I believe. And the coach doing his job say, hey, you guys can't be out here riding this thing on, on school property. And these kids literally went out and attacked this coach, broke his arm, my understanding, and some other injuries as well. But this is the lack of caring, the, the lack of uh, control the kids are having. They feel as though they can do as what they want, when they want, and how they want. And this requires them getting leadership guidance and direction. And the, this also leads right to continues in with the sports, you know, where sports are. I mean, if you go on YouTube, there's just an array of video clips of not only just parents berating officials, but physically attacking them. Your kids are watching that behavior. Your kids are learning from that behavior. And if they're not physically assaulting officials, they're verbally assaulting officials. So there was one video, as I'm saying, this is just popping my mind. Uh, this, this is an AAU tournament, a girls AAU tournament, and a, uh, a young lady gets hit hard. And you can hear the mom in the bleachers telling her daughter, don't let her do that to you. You give it to her or something to that effect. And this girl basically assaulted this other girl, getting back, taking direction from her mother up in the stands. That's why I'm not an advocate for coaching from the stands. Uh, my kids understand that they they had this conversation. We had this conversation as a team. I said, I'm not going to tell your parents not to coach from the stands. You are because you're the team. I'm the coach. This is our these are our rules and they need to be conveyed to your parents. Kids don't coach from uh, parents don't coach from the stands from teams I coach because it circum under it circum un- circumvents what I'm doing as a coach and it undermines the work that the kids are doing day to day in practice. And there's a there's a, just a written rule that people have lost, and I'm going to share these four points with you. Coaches coach, referees referee games, players play, and spectators spectate. And the game and sports need to become, get back to being spectator events and not that everybody gets to do it. So here's my question I ask, 
as a coach. Why would you as a parent pay me to train your kids, but yet you're going to tell me how to train your kids? I'm the expert. You're coming to the expert to get expert advice and direction. So I think before you act on something, make sure you understand what you're getting into. And the second part of it is, what are the kids learning from? And if you're going, okay, well, I can tell people how to do stuff, but even though I'm paying them to tell me, I can tell them how to do it. Kids are watching, kids are listening. And this, these are, this is just some of the challenges that they're going through because they're learning from watching. That's how they learn. They learn from direction. Parents show them how they want things done. And if it's how I think it's not the best way, then that's how they're learning it. And the, this is just one of the challenges they face. You know, the others that we already know about, uh, this is pre-COVID. So it's, it's like times 10 or even more now, but there's stress, there's depression and anxiety, self-harm, bullying, both physically and cyberbullying, sexual pressure, uh, a lot of sexual activity, uh, teen pregnancy, uh, the disrespect, you know, we just talked a little bit about that. Trust, they don't trust anybody because nobody's being honest with them, not at least not all the time. A lot of people tell them what they want to hear versus what they need to hear. Um, they're not motivated. Um, there's high substance abuse. And there are a lot of family issues that we don't know about. In turn, you know, a lot of kids bring a lot of baggage to school and they do that. They don't share it for the right reasons. A lot of them are embarrassed by some of it. But yet some people don't take to account that we don't live in the four walls that these kids do within the confines of these four walls that they do. Um, there's pressures of 24 hour networking. I mean, people on the social um, social media and they're on all their electronic devices 24 hours a day, pretty much. Um, I'm, I'm amazed. And I, I'm up late sometimes. I'm amazed at how many kids are still online late at night. I'm like, at some point, you know, you got to get some rest. So, you know, they're not getting enough sleep. And there's it, disciplinary issues, both at home and in school and outside of those two areas. And of course, there's a lot of body shaming, of course, which makes kids very insecure. I was going to give you some quick uh, stats. And this is on average, every 24 hours, just in the United States, just in the United States, about 1,400, just over 1,400 teens will attempt suicide. Uh, just under 2,800 uh, teenage girls will become pregnant. Uh, over 15,000 teens will use drugs for the first time. And over 3,500 kids will run away from home. And, um, and just two, usually two teen deaths a day. This is 24 hours. So you do the math and add that up to seven days and 30 days and 12 months. Those numbers get out of control. So this leads me to creating this village. And I haven't finished. I figured out how I'm going to do this. And this is where we are going to come up with this because I want it to be something that we come up with because this is not my I came up with the podcast. But the part that we're going to grow is what we're going to we're going to determine. And it's going to be a village. I don't know if it's a village of compassion or it's a village of leadership or if it's just our village of developing tomorrow's leaders, whatever it might be. So we'd we'll love to get your input. Um, but as we go through this, I've reached out to some some great people that I've met and some networking, and they are some absolutely phenomenal people with hearts of gold. And not all of them deal with young people, but they care enough to want to be a part of this village. And I just want to give you an overview of what some of these people do. I'm not giving names because I want you to tune in, but this is some of the things that they do. Um, one, a financial educator, which would be great for teaching kids about finances, which really doesn't happen in schools. Um, a parenting expert, which is going to be a great uh, collaborator with what I do, working with teens and, and also having a parenting expert leadership coach, professional a mediator and relationship coach, uh, CEO of Livestream Digital Innovations, the CEO of I Dare You To Be, a Canadian company that does tre tremendous work with uh, young people, um, a strategic communications expert, an award-winning educator, who happens to be, by the way, my older brother, Dr. Marvin Thompson. I will put that name in there because I'm very proud of him. That, um, a youth coach, a leadership trainer, a health and wellness coach, a great advocate for social and youth development, um, passionate educator, 
the CEO of Thriving Athletes, a nonprofit organization that helps both athletes and non-athletes uh, get financial aid for or get, fin- get finances for um, higher education opportunities. I have also have former players of mine that are going to be coming on, which I'm really excited about. And one of them happens to be a past, um, a few years ago, he won the Virginia State High School Basketball Championship, which I'm really proud of him for that. And also the COO, COO of the Boys and Girls Club, who happens to also be a former player of mine, and also an HR and transformational coach and a trusted educational advisor. So that's just a few of the people that are going to be coming to be a part of this. Um, And I am just super excited to have these people jump on board to be a part of this village of uh, developing tomorrow's leaders. And this is a platform that's for you. And it's for if you have kids, they tune in because you're going to get some great nuggets from a lot of great people. And we also want to find out what we, our village, can do to even do more to help the, not only the young kids, but help educators and help parents and be supportive to them. And I am super excited to have everybody on. And, and in closing, I want to give you guys a little bit of uh, contact information for me. If you are interested in being a guest on Developing Tomorrow's Leaders, would absolutely love to hear from you. You can reach me at Coach T at CoachT'sCorner.com. Again, that's Coach T at CoachT'sCorner.com. And I'm also on Instagram at Coach T's underscore corner. And also on Facebook, of course, Coach, uh, Coach T's Corner. And I also have a private base group, Facebook group, which is called Developing Tomorrow's Leaders. We'd love to have you join that as well and provide us with your feedback and input and continue to grow that community as well. And I will close by saying thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for taking the time to listen because it means more to me to know that you care enough just based on the title of this podcast that our young people need support, they need direction, leadership, and guidance, and we are that village that can do that. I am Coach T, and I look forward to seeing you. And as always, I'm here to educate, support, and inspire. Take care.